right, so just as a review from last class, remember that there are three different types of intermolecular forces that we'll see. And remember, intermolecular forces are the forces between different compounds or different elements. The first type is London dispersion forces. Now, every atom, every molecule has London dispersion forces. These are induced dipoles, meaning there's a, an attraction that occurs, but it is happens in one second and then it'll go away. So London dispersion forces are very weak, but they exist for every single molecule and every single atom. Now dipole-dipole forces, the reason why those exist is because a molecule will be polar, meaning it has a permanent dipole, meaning one side of it's going to be partially positively charged while another one will be partially negatively charged. Remember with your dipoles, we showed those arrows representing, for example, if you had H and O, oxygen is more electronegative, so it would be partially negatively charged permanently. So dipole-dipole forces are stronger for the most part than London dispersion forces, but they only exist in polar molecules. Now a hydrogen bonding is a type of dipole-dipole force, but hydrogen bonding can only occur between hydrogen because it's very, very, very not electronegative, and fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen, which are very electronegative. So the reason why hydrogen bonding is so much stronger than dipole-dipole is because there's a greater difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and F, O, or N. And so you just don't see that degree of difference with just regular dipole-dipole forces. So for hydrogen bonding, again, it has to be a polar molecule, but that molecule must have hydrogen and F, O, or N. So let's look at, within one type of intermolecular force, how the strengths of those bonds differ. Okay? So first we're going to be talking about the intermolecular forces, which I just talked about, which are for molecular compounds. And then we're going to talk about ionic and metallic. Okay? So for molecular compounds, let's first talk about London dispersion forces. All right, so these tend to be your weakest attraction, okay? Remember, you have an induced dipole. So if you notice for atom A and atom B, you can see the partial positive and the partial negative charge that attracts those two atoms to one another, but it's only going to be for a second, and then it'll go away. That's why it's called an induced dipole or a temporary dipole, okay? Now, if you have two different compounds or two different atoms with just London dispersion forces, if we want to compare the strength of those attractions, what we need to do is we need to talk about the polarizability of those molecules or those atoms. And specifically, polarizability is the ease with which the charge distribution is distorted. Now, what exactly does that mean? Basically, what it says is the more electrons an atom or a molecule has, the better able you can create that temporary dipole. It is more polarizable, meaning you can shift more electrons to create that partially positive and partially negative charge. So the more electrons an atom or a molecule has, the stronger its London dispersion forces. So if you notice here, neon versus fluorine, if you look at the periodic table, fluorine has a total of 18 electrons, while neon only has 10. So fluorine has a stronger intermolecular force. Its London dispersion forces are stronger. And the way we represent that is with a higher boiling point. Because if you think about it, in order for a liquid to become a gas, the attraction between those molecules, right, because the liquid, is the atoms are holding on to one another much more tightly versus a gas where they've released them. If your intermolecular force is really strong, then your boiling point is going to be very high. So you can look at all of these atoms and see the reason why they have those differences in boiling points is because the one in purple has a stronger intermolecular force, has stronger London dispersion forces, and that's because they have more electrons. They are more polarizable. The other factor that affects London dispersion forces is the shape. If you notice the difference between those two molecules right there, they have the same formula. The only thing that's different, so it's not a polarizability issue, it has to do with the surface area. If you notice the one on top, since it's linear, 
there is larger surface area for those two molecules to attract one another. Versus the one on bottom, if it's a sphere, there's less surface area. So the one on top is going to have a higher boiling point because the attraction between the molecules is stronger. So that's London dispersion forces. For dipole-dipole forces, remember it occurs in polar molecules, okay? and the strength of dipole-dipole forces increases as the polarity of a molecule increases. So if you notice propane right there, propane, if you were to draw that out, that's nonpolar. So the strength of its dipole-dipole forces is very, very, very weak. Okay? But if you notice as you increase the polarity of a molecule, as it becomes more and more and more polar, right, until you get to with nitrogen, which is extremely electronegative, so it's going to have a partially negative charge on that nitrogen, much more than that oxygen, then you're going to increase the dipole-dipole forces. Okay? And then for the last one, for hydrogen bonding, keep in mind that the hydrogen bonding is going to be, whenever you have hydrogen bonding, it's going to be stronger than London dispersion forces or dipole-dipole forces. Keep in mind, as you look at this, notice the hydrogen that's acting at, for the hydrogen bond. Notice that hydrogen is attached to either an oxygen, a nitrogen, or a fluorine. So not only does it have to be attracted to the oxygen of another molecule, but it itself has to be bound to F, O, or N. Okay? And so those four dots, five dots right there, represent that extremely strong hydrogen bond, that intermolecular force. Okay? So we just talked about the intermolecular forces that can occur for atoms or molecular compounds. Now, what about other types of compounds? So remember, molecular compounds are, are for non-metal and non-metals. Well, what if you have a metal and a non-metal? What if you have ionic bonding, okay, which is between a metal and a non-metal? Here, you're going to have that lattice structure. So you're not going to have these intermolecular forces of hydrogen bonding, London dispersion forces, or dipole-dipole. What's going to be attracting those ions together is this lattice energy, this bond between positive and negatively charged ions. And so that attraction is much stronger than the intermolecular forces we were talking about before because this is actually an intramolecular force. It's within a compound. And finally, we have metallic bonding. Okay? And metallic bonding is just between one type of metal. And notice the electrons move freely through that metal. Now, remember, you've got your covalent bonding with molecular compounds, you've got ionic compounds, and now we've introduced metallic bonding. Now a cool characteristic of metallic bonding is that it can conduct electricity. And the reason why metals conduct electricity is you can see how freely those electrons can move. And so if you stick, for example, a fork into a socket, a metal fork, it will conduct electricity because its electrons are free to move throughout.